Let's get one thing out of the way. The brain is not a blender, and consciousness is not a smoothie it whips up after breakfast. That may sound obvious to you, dear reader of rebellious newsletters, but in the sealed echo chambers of modern science, many still believe that consciousness is a byproduct, a sort of neural burp that accidentally emerged from billions of years of evolutionary mishaps. Like a cosmic typo. Oops. Guess this primate can reflect on its own mortality now. The dominant narrative goes something like this. Your neurons are just really good at electrical gossip. Enough of them spark, and poof, you're self-aware. You fall in love. You write poetry. You cry at Pixar movies. Why? Because your meat computer got warm enough to hallucinate personhood. And if that doesn't sound insane to you, you might be overdue for a metaphysical reboot. The problem with brain explaining. Here's the thing. The scientific model, at its most institutionalized, is allergic to mystery. It needs reality to be measurable, observable, and preferably boring. So when it encounters something like you, in all your emotional, imaginative, soul-drenched chaos, it panics. It dissects you. It reduces you to functions. Don't worry, it says scalpel in hand. It's just synapses. It's all in your head. Yes, literally. Except, when we search for the precise origin point of consciousness in the brain, we never find it. We find correlations. We find activity. But we don't find a spark. The moment awareness begins. We can't explain why a person has an inner life or why a child dreams of dragons before she knows what's real. And that's because consciousness isn't generated by the brain. It's received. Think radio. Think tuning fork. Think quantum Wi-Fi. A new model. They'll hate this one. Imagine this. Consciousness is the ocean. The brain is the cup. The water in the cup isn't created by the cup. It's simply what the cup allows in. Some brains hold more water. Some are cracked. Some are shaped like champagne flutes that only play Chopin but all of them are tapping into the same vast sea of sentience. This is why we dream things we've never seen. Why psychedelics don't create hallucinations, but lift the veil. Why near-death experiences often feel more real than real life. And why you, yes you, are not an accident, but an antenna. So why the denial? Because if we admit consciousness isn't just a biological side effect, we have to admit it might be bigger than us, older than us not entirely under our control. And that's terrifying. It means science has to step down from its lonely throne and admit the poets were right all along. But don't be mad at the scientists. Many of them are just scared mystics in lab coats. They wanted certainty, not magic. They wanted rules, not paradox. They wanted to explain the universe, not be in conversation with it. And that's where you come in. Dear reader, the invitation is this. Don't wait for permission from experts who've mistaken their microscopes for divinity. Start where you are. Feel the field. Listen for the signal. Consciousness is not inside you. You are inside it. Now go act like it. With inconvenient wonder, Lorian. Endeavor. Channeling metaphysical mayhem since approximately 10 seconds ago.